Hey, what is going on YouTube? My name is James and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be taking a look at the 1997 Seiko 5 7S26-3100. Now, before we get into this, I was trying to record a review for the Huawei smartwatch and I still, I, I just really struggled. Um, I'm going to have to rethink that review completely because I just don't know how to tackle that review. Um, so instead I'm going to be reviewing this because I need to get a review out. Um, this is the latest addition to my collection, which I haven't spoke about. I didn't do an unboxing about, I didn't do anything like that. And the reason being, I was too excited to get it. Now, the reason that I was so excited to get it is because this is a 1997 Seiko 5, as I said. The reason that that is special to me is because that was when I was born, 1997. This watch is as old as me and it is my birth year watch. Now, before we get into this review, let's just cover some basic facts. Now, the price of this watch, you can find anywhere between 35 and 60 pounds. Being vintage, or not being vintage, but being discontinued, it's difficult to actually name a price. They fluctuate. I picked this up for about 32 pounds, but I have also seen this exact watch not that long ago go for £50, so it just really depends. The movement it is using is the 7S26, which is the exact same movement that is in my SKX. Case size is 36 millimeters from this point to this point. It is 10 millimeters thick, and it uses 18 millimeter lugs. So it's very traditional sizing, which I really, really like. The crystal is a Hardlex crystal, which uh, Seiko are famous for. It is not like scratch resistant or anything like that um but it is more shatter resistant than sapphire so it does have its uses on direct impact it has loomed hands and loom pips around the markers and it is water resistant to 3 atm though i wouldn't probably take this anywhere near water so let's get into the pros of this watch first i want to cover the fact that it's a birth year watch is birth year watch it are birth year watches a big deal no in my opinion, they're not. They're not a big deal at all. Should everyone have a birth year watch? No, of course not. It's a bit ridiculous. But the reason I was so happy about this being a birth year watch is because I've been looking for a Seiko 5 for a while now. For those of you who remember, my first watch was a Seiko 5. It was from the 70s. And I absolutely loved it and I wish I never got rid of it. So I've been looking for a Seiko 5 to get for ages now and I really, really wanted a white dial. Um, I didn't care whether it was vintage. To be honest, I wanted to go brand new. Um, but I saw this pop up and I was like, oh, that's cool. And he wrote down all the codes on the back and everything. And I saw it said seven and I was like, all right, then let's do some more research. And through the archives and everything and all the websites that help you date your watches, you can find out exactly when this one was made. This was made October. I think it was October, um, 1997 which is really, really cool. And when I saw that, I was like, all right, then this is going to be the watch I'm going to get. Not only is it my birth year, it has the white dial, which is sunburst. And another thing about this dial, which I thought was absolutely incredible. Let me bring it in a bit closer. Do you guys see the, the black outlined hands and the blacked markers? I think that's just absolutely beautiful. Like it's, it's so, so nice. It, even the day date is like out, outlined in black almost. It's just really, really, really nice. And it's a nice little detail, which I haven't seen on many Seiko 5s. And it just adds that, that contrast with the white and the black. And it just looks really cool. Also, it is etched etched Seiko 5 on the crystal which I've not seen before either um, but the white sunburst dial is just beautiful and I just absolutely love this watch. Today. Another great thing about this watch is obviously the movement yes it's the 7s26 and yes I said in my Seiko 5 update video that I wish it had hacking and manual winding which I do but is it a bad movement no of course not just because I wish it had two extra features does not mean I think it's a bad movement um, it's an absolutely brilliant movement. It's a, just a workhorse. It just keeps running and running and running. This watch has never been serviced and I still think I'm not going to go get it serviced anytime soon. Don't fix what's not broken, as they say, or whatever the saying is. <laughs> um, the movement is just incredible. It runs really well. I've timed this watch and it's running about... It's running about four seconds a day. Uh, four seconds fast a day, which isn't like anything ridiculously bad and it's not anything ridiculously good um and it's also nothing to worry about in my opinion so i'm gonna leave getting this serviced for many years probably another really great thing about this watch is the bracelet yes you heard me right the bracelet it's so comfortable this sort of like i don't even know what kind of bracelet this is it's almost almost a jubilee bracelet but not quite um it's really really comfortable it feels amazing on the skin and it just bends around like any curve so the curvature of your wrist it just bends around perfectly it just feels so so good another really great thing about this watch is its traditional sizing with it being 36 millimeters it is that traditional size it's so comfortable it looks great on the wrist and let me show it you 
on my wrist. So here it is on my wrist, six and three quarter inch wrist. Um, I don't know what that is in centimeters, but there it is. Obviously, it doesn't look as big as this, the Aorus, which is a 42 millimeter watch, I think, but it definitely doesn't look ridiculous in my opinion. It's a nice sized watch. It looks great on the wrist. It just works really well. And you can see what I'm saying about the way that hugs the wrist, like, and the profiling, with it being 10 millimeters thick, it's pretty damn low and it does slip under a cup. Just to show you size difference, like that, that's the size difference we're looking at. It's pretty, pretty crazy. Another really good thing about this watch is the fact that it's so damn cheap. Even the brand new Seiko 5s you can pick up for around 50 quid, which is ridiculously good value for what you get you get this incredible watch now i do have to say with the new ones i did a quick sort of like overview go check it out of a new seiko 5 all the money goes into this part of the watch the bracelet on the new ones are just dog crap like you're going to throw them away and you're going to buy something new immediately so yeah the pricing of these is incredibly well valued i think everyone who's into watches should own a seiko 5 because they have so much variety they're like they're, they're almost like swatches in term, terms of variety. You can get so many different dial differences and everything like that. They do a beautiful blue one, which I've been looking at as well. But now I've got a Seiko 5, I don't really need another one. Okay, let's get on to the cons. And the one of them is including the bracelet, which I just said was great. It's this clasp. It is absolutely terrible. Like, it's just really, really bad. Like, there was no click there. This literally pops off a lot. I'm not exaggerating. I lean on a desk and this thing just pops off. It's really, really bad. The clasp is terrible, but the bracelet is so damn comfortable. Another thing I don't like is the four o'clock crown. I find it a bit of a faff to sort of get this out. And with it being 36 millimeters, it's not like the crown should be down here. It's not like it's down here because it's gonna hurt your wrist or anything. I much prefer them at the three o'clock position. I wish this was at the three o'clock position. It would have just been much more usable and uh, would have looked a bit nicer in my opinion. It does, it does kind of offset the symmetry of the watch a little bit in my opinion and i just i just wish it was up here another thing is that famous seiko rattle yes this has the famous seiko rattle it's just freaking annoying i'm not gonna lie does it put me off yeah massively because it's just you, you we, you'll be working and like you'll move your wrist and all you hear is like jingle bells coming along you know what i mean it's just crazy and it's really frustrating, but it's one of those things you can live with, especially when you're paying like 30 quid. Um, one thing I think is unacceptable is the fact that it's on the SKX, you know, that kind of price range. I think they should have got it to fit because similar price range, Makos and stuff don't have that. But anyway, that's not this watch. Um, you know, it's really annoying that Seiko rattle, um, but I do put this on a suede leather a lot of the time and it just looks great and I don't have that rattle. Another thing is this, this crystal just picks up fingerprints like anything. It's just really, really annoying. And also the, the high shine, um, high polish case as well picks up fingerprints. Imagine this like sandblasted. I think that'd look great, but oh well, it's high polish and also it picks up fingerprints. So that's the cons of the watch. Now to conclude my opinion on this watch, I think you're getting so much watch for the money. Do I think you can go wrong with a Seiko 5? No, not at all. Are them cons like groundbreaking and gonna ruin the value of the watch like to buy? No, definitely not. And you've got to remember, you're paying 35 quid. Is what? What is another 10, 20 quid for another strap or two to put on this? Absolutely nothing in my opinion. You know, you, you still get a better value watch than most watches out there even after buying a few straps um a watch like this with the white dial is so easy to dress up and dress down it's just an incredible watch the one thing that just bugs me is the clasp um it's just so cheap and terrible but i guess a lot of the money you gotta remember a lot of the money in construction goes in this area of the watch and not really this area even though this bracelet is really comfortable so would i advise every collector to, to collector to get a seiko 5 i would because i think they're so versatile you got so many designs so many to choose from and i just think they offer great value for for the money um, so if you're out there looking for a watch and you're looking for a great reliable watch and you're not really into watches and you just want something that's going to run for, for many, many years, get a Seiko 5 and you will not regret it. If you're into watches, I also think you should get a Seiko 5 because again, you also won't regret it. So that's my review for the Seiko 5. Let me know if you own one or two or three down in the comments. Let me know if you're going to own one, two or three also. Um, and I'll see you all again in the next video. Thank you for watching and take care.